Hey everyone, welcome to Think Global Logistics special presentation at the TPM24 at the Long Beach Convention Center. We decided to participate in this annual event, which traditionally has been very US centric, focusing on everything that's logistics. But now it's sort of branching out to tech, to airfare and all that sort of stuff. We're gonna do a daily update for you as we complete each of the presentations, we're gonna give you a sort of an overview, review our own comments about that particular talk, and we will post it on a daily basis or as each event concludes after our participation in that event. Subscribe, like, while we bring you this wonderful content on the premier industry event, that is TPM24. Let's work out how much AI is in this AI talk. Make sure you smile with the photo, Julie. The future of supply chain starts here, or so they say. I think this word at the front of that is gonna be heavily featured this year, AI. I think everyone's gonna be using AI, but let's see what the technology is at the end of the day. We just uh, concluded our first uh, presentation of sorts. This is on a Sunday afternoon and the conversation it relates to AI. So when that popped up we really wanted to attend because everybody's talking about AI but very few actually understand it. So this was a talk that we were highly interested in want to participate and understand. Well firstly the presenter was ex Fritz Companies which yep. I used to work for many many years ago. Mm -hmm. Then Gardner and he's the co-founder of Trade Accelerators as well as the president so I believe that's a consultant firm of sort. Good on him for doing it because you know you can tell clearly that you know he was not feeling great and his voice was struggling throughout the conversation. Well firstly I think he painted a background in terms of what supply chain is. Uh, he painted a background of what AI can mean, what it means today and what it may mean in the future. He's a logistics guy. So anything to do with logistics by way of freight forwarding and what have you, you know this guy is going to be a pro because he's been doing it for a very long time. So that clearly showed when he was presenting various subject matters relating to specifically logistics and freight. He's done a bit of research on the AI front, but I must admit a lot of the chat whilst Somewhat insightful, it has left me wanting. There were a lot of suggestions and opinions, but not a lot backed up with actual data. And I think he probably did a fantastic job by showing the folks in the room that may not be up to speed with AI, they would have got a lot of value. But in terms of what AI is actually today, I think to the best of his ability, he has done the best he can by giving us the foundation of understanding of AI. So he's achieved that. But for someone such as myself and for Julie, we write our own technology. We, we develop in-house every day. It's purely for our own use. Uh, so on the subject of AI, it's actually very meaningful. You know, we go from the techie nerdy in terms of actual practical uses to real applicable future use cases. So for us, there wasn't a lot there. Okay. Because a lot of the stuff spoken, it was more opinions. It was more suggestions. There was a few examples made about a certain few companies who's utilizing these AIs. There was even a slide with certain um, tech companies that was suggested that they were, you know, on the forefront of AI development. Those were not backed with any sort of substantiated evidence, if you want to call it that, or any sort of data, which is quite ironic because we talk about AI's data, but there's no data. He suggested supply chain was in supply chain because there's all these to and fro's and problem fixing and all that sort of stuff. It's more of a circular interaction. My challenge to Dan is, of course it is. I mean, you're at a logistics conference, sure, but there might be some shippers that may not understand that concept. But anyone's in supply chain understands supply chain isn't just this linear chain, right? <laughs> the whole idea of supply chain within each chain that there is interactions to and fro between various parties because things change. We live in a real world. There are variables. If anyone calls themselves a supply chain expert, professional, or working in supply chain, believes that supply chain is in fact just a linear thing, once you've done one job, you get to move on, they're not in supply chain because you simply don't understand supply chain. So I thought that sort of felt a bit short because they, were, they had a lot of supply chain folks in that talk. I understand what Dan was trying to say, but you know, I, I didn't think he got the response that he had hoped for with that. Then he touched something about feedback loop, which I thought was a very fancy way of saying problem solving right feedback loop you know almost bordering on 
third law of Newton, right? For every action, there's an equal opposite reaction. Naturally, again, you know, supply chain people, well, what is our actual job? It's not transact a shipment. Our actual job is fix a problem, right? Transacting a shipment, you can teach a monkey how to do. But it is fixing the problem that's been created by another human being. Now, that's a little bit more difficult. That is also then rings true with AI. Unless the whole world and every party around the table is AI driven and AI dealing with AI, then we can solve the problems that come to supply chain. But as long as there's still a human involved in the supply chain, AI just simply isn't going to cope with the nuances of what it is to be a human. And that is one of the biggest challenges for us as a developer and as well as other developers that might be looking at this. The topic of info terms came up multiple times. For that to be mentioned multiple times, it just tells you how little respect us as an industry pays to Inco terms, right? In fact, we come across on a daily basis where people misuse Inco terms, and that's very much a reality. So I thought when Dan brought Inco terms up, they sort of also reverberated, you know, my belief that if everybody knew their Inco terms, we wouldn't have half the problems we go through today. We all know credit application process, especially with credit cards, what have you, these days when you apply something, a human is not making those decisions anymore. It's a computer using your credit record and all that sort of stuff. That's been happening for a good while now but somehow to suggest that should be applied or is being applied to globe tra uh, global trade whether we give someone a, a credit term or not that is simply isn't going to be realistic you're discounting all of the smes because most smes will not be using an ai model to de to determine who to give credit or not and in fact if we're going to apply such a draconian arbitrary way of deciding credit every small company there'll be no new ideas unless some small company's got such a great idea that's got vc funding they got all these millions of dollars and what have you but that's a small percentage because at the end of the day small business are being created every day and all of those small business believe it or not if it wasn't for somebody giving them credit and most of the time when it relates to goods it's afraid for to give them credit they simply will not lift off so that sort of kills off that reality and let's face it most small and medium-sized logistic companies we rely on other SMEs to survive right so that application wasn't I, I felt didn't really ring true in practice blockchain he said or he's suggesting that it wasn't real I in fact probably find blockchain having more meaning and value in supply chain than AI is today and that's being real with you uh, so Dan, if you're listening to this, I encourage you to look at some of the blockchain technology that's being built, specifically relating to logistics area, where it has real meaningful impact. Like not just talking about what it can be happening or trucks talking the gates where the gates automatically open up because they recognize that number play is real or whatever. No, no, that's child's play. Real supply chain is consistency with paperwork, consistency and strict control of paperwork. The errors are everywhere to be seen globally and blockchain can put a stop to that. Yes, it will take a lot of people buyings and governments buying for that to be a reality, but technology itself is true and sound. It will fix a lot of the dramas we face as a freight forwarder or a logistics person or a buyer of our service or what have you, because a lot of it is data corruption people not doing the right thing with, with certain type of paperwork and you can't keep track of your cargo moving across the supply chain and blockchain is the technology for that now there was one um, part which Dan presented which I agree wholeheartedly with he said that for AI to be true AI it needs to generate input of data and output data on its own without human interaction yeah, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. Now, that's true artificial intelligence. Right now, I'm not confident what we have been sold as AI is that. What we have been sold as AI is but just a massive program of analytics, predictive analytics, throwing a whole bunch of data. It will do its mathematic equations or whatever you want to call it, and they'll replicate something and it'll go through probabilities and spit something out with the highest probability rate. For me, that's not AI, that's predictive analytics. What AI should be is it can get data on its own and it will output a certain data or make an action happen based on those decision-making processes. If that is to be happening, then you need to lay a certain level of foundation laws or protocols so it doesn't go beyond those, you know, like do not hurt a human or something. You know, this is science fiction coming into play now, right? Um, but that's true AI. So what we have today is not true AI, in my view. 
sort of towards the end of these presentation, which I was most looking forward to, was actually trying to give us some real life examples of companies using AI. He's made a few references to various few companies and suggested what they were doing with it, but that was about it. There was no sort of case study example of what the difference it had made, how they were, where they were, what they used, and how they transitioned from where they were to where they are now today. And, um, and any sort of data in terms of efficiencies and what it actually means to the end user. Because let's face it, we can talk about something that can do something, but without it making a difference to an end user or having some sort of improvement, then what's the point of any of this? So I felt that particular part, which is the part which I was most intrigued because I was really keen to understand who's actually using AI, but tell me how they're using it because that's what I wanted to know giving us a bit more teaser in terms of the practicality of those companies using the technology and what the difference it's made for them would have been so much more powerful than just sort of this suggestive title of what they are doing using it for i know we made a video on our channel about ai and freight uh, and logistics what it may mean we've already got some comments from logistics folks saying great thank you guys for making that content because you know they've been looking everywhere for someone to make sense of all for them that video was very early days when we made that video guys you know that was when chat gpt first came out and we suggested what it can mean so for us that video was a bit fluffy but we're probably about a year into this now our knowledge has sort of increased quite a bit so i'm going to do a, actually a dedicated episode on um, artificial intelligence and the practical applications of this technology to logistics industry. Maybe give you some examples and some substance examples of how it's being used by companies today, which I think I will struggle, right? Because if I really strike a sniff, I'm gonna be disappointed. Eventually, invariably, it's gonna end up with this company saying that they're AI, but they're using a whole call center of some, I mean, people in India or Philippines doing the, you know, the, the freaking data entry. That's been our experience today. but. What I will give you is give you the pros and the cons of the current understandings of AI, where things are falling short that needs to have more content or more explanation or more substance on, where things are going the right direction and how we might use that technology practically on a day-to-day -day basis for our customers and for our people.